I'm going to talk a little bit about why we need quantum mechanics. Now, you, you might have heard before that under the rules of classical mechanics, atoms would collapse in on themselves. This is a problem because a model of physics that we you know, choose to use should be able to accurately predict and describe the world around us. And if we shouldn't exist, then chances are the model's probably wrong. So, of course, it, it, it might not be too big a problem because if it would take a time scale of quadrillions and trillions of years for an atom to collapse, then it's not really a big deal because you know we're still here. Um, so what we're going to do is look at hydrogen uh, and see how long it takes for the electron to fall in and collapse into the nucleus and the atom would collapse. Uh, this derivation does use calculus. Um, I have a different video that does not use calculus, so if you do not know calculus, I recommend checking out the other one. Um, otherwise, I'm going to get started. So, um, I've drawn here the model uh, that we are going to be using of the classical atom. Uh, which is uh, just a proton uh, and an electron orbiting around it. It's hydrogen, so very straightforward. Um, the mass I've written down, the mass of the electron, uh, the uh, electric constant, uh, of constant of permittivity here, um, the radius from the proton to the electron, and the charge of the electron, uh, which you might recognize as one electron volt just in coulombs. Um, so we also have to write down another important formula, uh, which is called the Larmor formula. And this states that the rate of change of energy with respect to time, so dE dt, is equal to negative q squared a squared, where q is charge and a is acceleration, divided by uh, 6 pi epsilon naught c squared, where c is the speed of light, about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Uh, and this just gives the rate at which energy is lost of an ex as an, a charge accelerates. Um, and a, this electron is accelerating because it's changing direction. Uh, so therefore, this formula will apply. So, if you want to know how long it takes total to collapse into uh, the, for the atom to collapse, um, then it would make sense to, to first look at how much energy does the electron lose every orbit. Because if we know how much energy it has total, which we can calculate, uh, how much energy it loses per orbit, then we can figure out how long will it take to fall in. So, one orbit, which will be the electron's period, uh, we'll call it T, is going to be equal to the distance it travels, which because it's a circle, it's going to be 2 pi r divided by its velocity, which is going to be v. Problem. We don't have the velocity. So we have to find the velocity of the electron. Uh, this is actually quite doable. Um, we're going to look at the forces acting on the electron to try to extract uh, a velocity from it. So the only force acting on the electron is the Coulomb potential, uh, Coulomb force, sorry. Um, and it is the force that is keeping the electron held in and rotating around. And this, the, uh, any force that does this is called a centripetal force. And the centripetal force also has a definition. So the uh, Coulomb force is doing double duty, serving as the Coulomb force, but also as a centripetal force. So we can set those equal to each other. So the Coulomb force um, is, uh, let's see, so the Coulomb force uh, is q squared divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared and a centripetal force is given by mv squared over r. So now we can solve for v, which is you know the reason we're doing this. Uh, so I'm going to multiply both sides by r, divide by m, and then take the square root. I'm not actually going to do it out, just pretend I did. Um, so we get that velocity is equal to q divided by the square root of 4 pi epsilon naught m times r. So that's great. We now have uh, the value of velocity. And if you want a number, um, this is approximately uh, 2,250,559 uh, meters per second. So it's going pretty fast, but not unbelievably fast, like close to the speed of light, where we then have to use uh, special relativity. Um, so it's going pretty fast. So now we have v, uh, and I'm just going to, we have found v, I'm just going to keep this v, this v in v form, I'm not going to write out the number for it, um, just to keep things all in one form. Um, so uh, what we want to do then is look at the Larmor formula, and we want to know the energy lost per orbit. So if this gives the energy lost per time, then we can pick the time to be of one orbit and plug the period into the dt term. So we're going to have that dE dt, but dt is equal to the period. So 2 pi r divided by v 
is equal to the rest of the Lord Moore formula, which is negative q squared a squared divided by 6 pi epsilon naught c squared. And now we can find the energy loss per orbit just by multiplying both sides by the 2 pi over v and then plugging everything in. Um, but you'll notice that we don't have an a. So what are we going to do? Well, this is a force. And forces are equal to mass times acceleration. So this equals ma. And you cancel the m's and we have a is equal to v squared over r. Now we have a. So I'm going to put in uh, to here v squared over r and that becomes squared because the a squared. Uh, and we'll multiply both sides by that, plug all the values in, and you'll find that dE is equal to negative q squared v cubed divided by 3 epsilon naught c cubed r. And this has a, an approximate value of 4 times 10 to the negative 24 joules. This is a tiny amount of energy lost. So maybe, maybe atoms actually will last a long time but let's keep going and find out. So we have how much energy lost per orbit, so now let's try to find how much energy it has total. So the total amount of energy uh, in the atom is going to be equal to the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. So that's going to be K as kinetic plus U for potential. The kinetic energy here is one half mv squared, and the potential energy uh, is going to be, uh, we can figure that out actually from the force, right? So uh, force is the negative derivative of potential energy with respect to time. Uh, and we have the Coulomb force acting, so we're going to use the Coulomb potential uh, as our potential energy. So that is minus uh, Q squared divided by uh, 4 pi epsilon naught R. And now we're going to find a common denominator, combine like terms, and I'm going to come back up here. Uh, and we'll get that E is equal to negative q squared divided by 8 pi epsilon naught r. Fantastic. So now we have an energy. And remember that the Larmor equation says that the rate of change of energy with respect to time is given by a bunch of stuff. So we can take this energy and plug it into the Larmor equation. So we'll have that d dt of energy, which is negative q squared, divided by 8 pi epsilon naught r, is equal to the rest of the Larmor equation, which is negative q squared a squared, divided by 6 pi epsilon naught c squared. And again, anytime you see an a, I'm just going to put in a v squared over r at some point, so if you see that change to v's, that's why. So we're going to pull out all the constants in here that do not depend on time. Um, q, the charged electron, doesn't depend on time nor does epsilon naught, and hopefully 8 and pi don't, so we're going to pull those out. Radius it is going to collapse in, so we're going to have to keep the radius in there. So we're going to have um, negative q squared divided by 8 pi epsilon naught times d dt of 1 over r is equal to negative q squared a squared divided by 6 pi epsilon naught c squared. Okay. So now we're going to do something a little bit sneaky. We are going to take this ddt of 1 over r, because we can't actually do this because we don't know how r depends on t. We only know that it does. Um, and we're, I'm also going to take this here and divide it out, and it's going to go over there, because these terms are similar. So they'll cancel little stuff over there, and we'll just keep all the r's over on the left. So we're going to pull out from here uh, a neg uh, 1 over r squared. We're going to keep the negative over here. So we have negative. 1 over r squared. But if we do that, there has to be an extra r squared on the inside. So then we have r squared over r is r, and we have dr dt. And that is something that we can actually use. And that's going to be equal to uh, 4v to the fourth power divided by uh, 3r squared. Oh, sorry. No. Nope. Um, it's going to be equal to uh, 4v to the 4th over, actually, yes, 3r squared, c cubed. And uh, this, uh, remember, recall that v is equal to uh, the value that we have over here. Um, so v to the 4th is going to be equal to q to the 4th divided by 16m squared, r squared, pi squared, epsilon naught squared. Lots of, lots of letters. Um, 
So then this becomes something that we can very easily solve. Um, we're just going to do separation of variables here. Uh, so we're going to have, uh, when we multiply both sides by the dt, we'll have the integral uh, from the initial radius to the final radius uh, of negative 1 over r squared dr. And that's going to be equal to the integral of this with respect to time. Uh, so it equals the integral from 0 to, t we'll call it tau for the time of collapse, um, of q to the fourth divided by 12 m squared r to the fourth pi squared epsilon naught squared c cubed dt. And if you do this integral, this is easy, you just multiply by t, and this is, you know, just as straightforward, um, you'll find uh, that this gives you uh, one third times uh, r initial cubed minus r final cubed, because we took the negative sign, which basically just flipped the bounds, um, and that's equal to q to the fourth times tau divided by uh, 12 m squared pi squared, epsilon naught squared c cubed, and solving for tau, we just, you know, multiply by this, divide by q to the fourth, uh, for our final, we know it's going to be 0, and for our initial, it's going to be 10 to the negative 10 meters. Um, and then we can just plug in all the values for that, and this is where we find it. We find the time that it takes the classical atom to collapse, tau, equals, any final guesses on what scale, seconds, minutes, hours, billions of years? Here we go. It is 1.05 times 10 to the negative 10 seconds. That's how long it takes a classical atom to collapse. It takes a billionth of a billionth of a second, like really, really fast. Basically, none of us would exist if classical mechanics was correct, which is why we need quantum mechanics. This also has a really interesting uh, result here, though, because Electrons are moving around the radi uh, around the nu nucleus, right? And accelerating charges do radiate. So what about this guess? What about this model of our atom is wrong? The thing that's wrong about it is actually the electron moving. Electrons, according to quantum mechanics, do not move around the nucleus when they're in their ground state like this. You have been lied to throughout all of middle school and high school. Electrons do not orbit the nucleus, because if they did, they'd be accelerating, and they'd lose energy, and they'd collapse in much less than a second. So, uh, quantum mechanics explains why that is, uh, and it is indeed very interesting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, and you can tell all your friends now that, in fact, electrons do not orbit the nucleus. And because uh, if you did, none of us would exist. So you are living proof that classical mechanics is incorrect. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed it.